Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters, and welcome once again for this Lenten series. As we journey through this season of Lent, each one of us always wonders, does God really love me? Will God forgive me for my sins? Will I get to know him during this season of Lent? As we've been reflecting over the last couple of days, Today we look at another aspect where we all do it every month, every year, especially during the season of Christmas and during the season of Lent. Today as we look into our own life, we wonder sometimes there are moments and experiences that hurt us, that take us away from God. Sometimes we think, is it God who is calling me? Or is it that I'm going away from God? Well, the only thing that can take us away from God is our sin. And today as we look more deeper into our own life, very often we think that when I sin, God does not love me. God does not welcome me. But my dear friends, that's not the case. The more we sin, the more God loves us. And the less we sin, God gives us the special grace to live our life. Well, the church has given us various sacraments during our Christian journey, where at every moment of our life, we come, we receive the grace from God, and through this sacrament, we are blessed. Today, as we look at the sacrament of confession, well, a sacrament that talks of God's love and God's healing power. And how many of you have already experienced the power of God, the power of God's love in your life? Well, we see that when we sin, we go away, not just from God, but also from our community. Sin takes us away, but it is God's love that draws us more closer to Him. And so we see, my dear friends, that through every moment in our life, God is constantly speaking to us. Well, today I'd like to talk to you that when we sin, we realize that we are going away from God and we miss the grace that God gives us. But after every sin, there is reconciliation. We turn back to God. We turn back to God for the moments that we fail against Him and against the community. And after reconciliation, we receive the sacraments where God blesses you and me. He gives us this special grace. Well, Jesus instituted the sacrament of reconciliation for three main important elements. The first, that he loves you and me as we are. All of us can go to God. God will not question us of how many sins have we done or when was our last confession or how many times we keep making or doing the same sins. But God loves us as his own sons and daughters. The second is that Jesus seeks the lost. When we sin, we are lost in the world. We cannot face our life. We cannot face people. We cannot face situation. And so the sacrament of reconciliation, Jesus seeks the lost. When we come for the sacrament of confession, Jesus is looking you and me. He's not just looking at our sins, but he is looking at our heart. And the third element is that Jesus heals the sick. Every time that we confess our sins, Jesus is healing us. How many of you, when you come for the sacrament of confession, and when the priest gives you the absolution, and you are convinced that God has forgiven you of your sins, how many of you? go back home happy, or you will still be sad and say, I think 
I think God has forgiven me. Or how many of you will say, I believe that God has forgiven me. That's the joy that Jesus brings in your life and mine. During this entire sacrament, Jesus strengthens us in our physical and spiritual weakness. This is one of the most beautiful sacraments where we can talk to God face to face. The priest who sits there is God. And we believe that it is not that priest, but it is God himself who listens to us. It is God himself who gives us the little advice. It is God himself who forgives us. And it is God himself who sends us. As we reflect on the sacrament of confession, well, there are so many names that come to us. Some of us will say that it is called the sacrament of penance. Some will say it is called the sacrament of reconciliation. Some will say it is called the sacrament of forgiveness, sacrament of conversion, sacrament of confession. But I'd like to take you to a more deeper level. This is also a sacrament of love. It is between God and us. Imagine, my dear friends, when we go for the sacrament of confession, it's only between God and God and you. And no one else knows what you are talking. And so the sacrament of confession becomes, becomes a very close-knit moment when you open up your life to God. And so the sacrament of confession invites you and me to believe that it is God and us. It is God and me. There's no one else who knows what I share, but it is only God himself. Well, we are told in Luke chapter 19, verse 10, that the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. And how blessed are we. Every time that we come for confession, we come with a repentant heart. We come and we tell Jesus of all our sins that we have committed. And we tell Jesus that we want to repent of all our sins. Jesus is looking at the lost sheep at every sacrament of confession. When we come to the confessional, we experience joy, we experience love, and we experience peace. Well, some of us will wonder and ask ourselves, why do I need to confess to God? Why do I need to go to a priest? Well, the sacrament of baptism reminds you and me that at the sacrament of baptism, our sins are washed away. But during the course of our lifetime, there are moments when we sin. There are moments when we fall down. There are moments when we are weak. And so the sacrament of confession helps us to reconcile to God again and again. This is a sacrament that we can always go to God. We don't need to go only once. But every time that I feel that I'm weak, every time that I feel that I have sinned, every time that I feel that I've, I've done something wrong, I can just go for the sacrament and experience God's love and mercy. Well, my dear friends, the sacrament of confession helps you and me to clean our life. It is just like an antivirus that we use for our computers or laptop. And every time you press on the scan button, the whole computer gets scanned. You don't only scan one part of a computer or a laptop, but you scan the entire computer. When we come for the sacrament of confession, God scans our own life. And so when we scan our life, we empty all that is there to Jesus. And Jesus deletes automatically. We don't need to tell him, Lord, this is my area that I'm struggling. Lord, this is the area that I'm weak. But the very fact that we can go to Jesus, he knows you. He knows what is in your heart. And so he has already scanned your heart. He has already deleted the dirt that is in your heart. And so... When you finish confession and when the priest gives you that absolution and sends you in peace, you begin a new page in your life. You begin a new journey in your life. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, all of us experience the moment 
of grace, the moment of love when we come for the sacrament of confession. How many of you, when you know you you confess to God and when you confess to the priest, you experience that you're emptying yourself. We are all called to self-empty ourselves to God so that when we self-empty, God can fill us with his love. God can fill us with his mercy. God can fill us with his compassion. How many of you will say that, you know, every time that I go for confession, I experience a new joy. But sometimes we don't because we keep remembering our sins. We think that God has not forgiven us. We think that God still remembers our sins. And so when we go for confession, I got four steps that will help you to make a very happy and a joyful confession. You know, for me, the sacrament of confession is a moment to rejoice because I'm meeting Jesus face to face. And today, I want to give you four steps that are so linked to the prodigal son. The first step that each one of us needs to do is that we need to realize, we need to realize that God is with us, that we have made a mistake in our life. Well, you know, when you, when you read through the parable of the prodigal son, the prodigal son realized that he has done something wrong. And he, and he rethinks of how the workers must be enjoying themselves. And so he says, no, I must go back to my father's house. And so the first step is we need to realize that we are weak, that we are sinners. The second step that reminds us is that we need to repent. The prodigal son just tells us that so many times we have to repent in our own life. The prodigal son, you know, makes a firm decision that he's going to go back to his father and tell his father that, Father, I have sinned against heaven and on earth. And he prepares himself. He repents of his wrongdoing. And he wants to repent and go back to his father. The third step that reminds us is that he returns to his father. He is not worried of what his father is going to tell him. But he knows that he is weak. He knows that he has done something wrong. And so he returns to the father and he tells his father, Father, I have sinned against you and on heaven. Father, treat me as one of your hired servants. But you know, my dear friends, the father does not think of all that is happening. But instead, the father rejoices. And that's the fourth step, which he tells us. That the father, he goes and tells his workers, go and get the best robe, get a ring. Let's celebrate. For my son that was lost is now found. As we reflect and as we journey to the season of Lent, let us ask ourselves during the season of Lent, are we rejoicing after the sacrament of confession when God forgives you and me? When God takes us in his arms and says, you are mine, you are my son, you are my daughter in whom I am well pleased. Jesus on the cross said, Father, forgive them. Jesus never kept anything back, but he forgave his enemies. He forgave those who did wrong against them, who did wrong against him. And he brought forgiveness to those who did bad to him. As we journey to the season of Lent, Jesus invites you and me, my dear brothers and sisters, to go through these four steps to realize that we are sons and daughters of him, to repent of our sins, to return to the Father, and to rejoice in the mercy and forgiveness of Jesus. Let us pray that each one of us, whenever we go for the sacrament of confession, that we will experience the joy of Jesus, that we will experience the joy of love, that we will experience the joy of forgiveness. God bless all of you and may we experience this forgiveness, this joy and love whenever we go for the sacrament of confession. Amen.